To Washington now. Democrats are divided on whether or not to move forward with impeachment proceedings for President Trump. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi continues to urge caution, suggesting let's just continue the investigations we already have going. But other Democrats want to start impeachment proceedings and they want to do it now. After the Mueller report revealed what many say is a pattern of deception and attempted abuses of power. Our chief congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes has more. I believe Congress should take the steps towards impeachment. After simmering for two years, impeachment talk is suddenly at full boil. If any other human being in this country had done what's documented in the Mueller report, they would be arrested and put in jail. But not all Democrats are there yet. If for the next year, year and a half, going right into the heart of the election, all that the Congress is talking about is impeaching Trump and Trump, Trump, Trump and Mueller, 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 and we're not talking about health care. We're not talking about raising the minimum wage to a living wage. What I worry about is that works to Trump's advantage. If we're only talking about him, then folks at home feel like nobody's talking about them. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tried to quell impeachment talk on a conference call with party members last night, telling colleagues we don't have to go to articles of impeachment to obtain the facts. But some of her members disagreed. Florida's Val Demings telling Pelosi, I think we have great evidence that the president has blatantly violated so many laws, it's just ridiculous. I think we have enough. Are you worried about impeachment, Mr. President? But even as President Trump shrugged off the notion at the White House Easter egg roll, the chair of the House Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, was issuing yet another subpoena, this time for testimony and documents from former White House counsel Don McGahn, who Nadler described as a critical witness to many of the alleged instances of obstruction of justice. Republicans say Democrats are grasping at straws, noting McGahn sat for more than 30 hours of interviews with the special counsel's investigation. Nancy Cordes joins us now from the D.C. Bureau. All right, Nancy, so from your report, Val Demings, you've got um, Congressman Castro, who's also talking about impeachment. Who else? Can you name anybody else? Sure. I mean, there are a number of, uh, of Democrats who are talking about impeachment, and some of them have pretty uh, big megaphones. You've got Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who signed on right. to a, a resolution last week. Um, so there, there are Democrats who either for more than a year or more recently are on the uh, impeachment bandwagon. But the reality is uh, the leadership is not, and they're the ones who call the shots. Uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, the chair of the Judiciary Committee, right, Jerry right. Nadler, they are saying no impeachment right now. They believe that there are political perils in going down that road right now. So, they're not closing it off. Yeah. Pelosi is saying, you know, doesn't mean that, uh, that we have to take it off the table, but uh, there's no point in discussing impeachment until Congress has done its investigations. Keep in mind, Mueller was investigating for almost two years. The House has really only begun investigating some of these issues within the past month or two since Democrats took control of the House. So they believe that there's no rush and actually that there's danger in talking about it too much right okay, now. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to take what Robert Mueller presented and run with that toward impe impeachment. She wants to go through her own investigations in the House and then at the culmination of that, maybe pair them both together and either move forward or not? Exactly. Because first of all, uh, there's a lot of disagreement even within the Democratic Party over whether what Mueller found is enough to impeach a president on. Uh, sure, if you're just looking at it uh, objectively, if you believe he obstructed justice, can you go ahead and impeach on that? Yes. But there's a lot of disagreement over where the bar is. There's a lot of disagreement over whether uh, you could, uh, you know, there's any point in doing that when there's clearly no Republican buy-in. So it's kind of a, a suicide mission. You'd go through all of this in the House, it would make its way over to the Senate where it would die because Republicans are not in favor of impeachment. And so then what have you done? Uh, you've basically, you know, galvanized the entire House around this process for months and it doesn't go anywhere. There are a lot of Democrats who think that that is a fool's errand. Now, could things change for Pelosi if a much larger segment of her own uh, membership right. rises up and says, we've got to do this? Right. Uh, we just think that the things that he, the president has done are too egregious to ignore? Sure, that could force her absolutely to change her mind. She's someone who listens very closely to no. her members, but we're not there yet. All right, so we also learned
Current President Trump and the Trump Organization are suing the House Oversight and Reform Chairman Elijah Cummings to stop the subpoenas for information on the president's businesses. Where do we stand on that? Well, uh, that has just been filed, so that will work its way through the district court system. Essentially, the president is arguing that Democrats don't have a right to his uh, tax records because all they want to do is embarrass him, that they don't actually have any legislative purpose for getting these documents. It's just another sign that the president is very intent on Congress not getting a hold of his tax Bingo. records, which leads some Democrats to say, well, you know, gosh, what's in there that he's... It's so important to him that we not see them. Uh, at the same time, there's this new deadline for the Secretary of the Treasury. He missed the first deadline. Right. Um, he said he still needed to think about it and look it over. Um, and so now he's up against another deadline. Uh, and Democrats are, are very eager to see whether this time he is going to turn over the president's tax records or if he doesn't, what sort of basis he comes up with for denying Congress access to those records because Democrats very firmly believe that the law is on their side. Okay, so here's one. my question for you and that deadline, by the way, that Nancy's talking about is five o'clock tonight. If they skip the deadline, if they don't produce the tax ret returns, wh what other recourse does the Congress have? Well, you know, then they've got to go through the court system. And as you know, that could take months. Oh, uh, so right. that's why they're, you know, that's why they're they're asking for them now. I think probably, uh, you know, if they're being realistic, they don't expect that they'll get them for some time. Right. But they wanted to get the ball rolling. Got it. Jerry Nadler, let's talk about him. The chairman sure. of the uh, Judiciary Committee has subpoenaed uh, for testimony and documents from former White House counsel Don McGahn. Uh, has McGahn said yet whether or not he'll go and testify? He has not, um, but I assume that, uh, you know, like other uh, members of the Trump organiza organization or the White House uh, and former members as well, that he will be at least partially cooperative. I mean, he had, he had already gotten a letter from the Judiciary Committee asking for documents. He was one of those 88 individuals or entities who got a letter like that a couple of months ago. So this probably is not going to come as a surprise to him. But what might come as a surprise is the list of things that Nadler says he wants from again. It's like 36 different items, conversations about this, conversations about that, mm. documents about this. I mean, this this is like serious uh, uh, documentation that Nadler is looking for from McGahn, uh, which indicates that Nadler thinks that McGahn is really key to his investigation into obstruction of justice. Republicans, I should point out, say that this is all a smokescreen. They say that Nadler is just trying to create the aura of impropriety and that McGahn has been very cooperative. He's worked with the special counsel. He's worked with Congress. You don't need to support him to get this kind of information from him. Um, so they say that, that Nadler is, is ratcheting up the tension unnecessarily. And the reason, uh, as Nancy's talking about, McGahn is so important is because he was kind of one of the star headlines in the Mueller report. If you haven't read it, mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty interesting section. Nancy Cordes, thank you very much. You're welcome.